Hello, welcome to the next section, TCP and UDP. This section dives into using Rust for networking. So now we move on to our first video, simple TCP server and client. Most networking examples start with an echo server. So let's go ahead and write a basic echo server. First, I open TCP echo server RS file. We now exit this file. So I go to root and open the file and change the IP address. In our main function, we create a new TCP listener, which in Rust represents a TCP socket that's listening for incoming connections from clients. For our example, we've hard coded the local address and the port. The local address being set to 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 tells the kernel to bind this socket to all available interfaces on this host. We call bind on the local IP and port pair to create a local listening socket. As discussed earlier, our given choice of IP will bind this socket to all interfaces available on the host on port 8888. As a result, any client that can reach a network connected to this host will be able to talk to this host. The expect function returns the listener, if there are no errors. If that's not the case, it panics with the given message. The incoming method on listener returns an iterator over streams that have connected to the server. We loop over them and check if any of those have encountered an error. In that case, we can print the error and move on to the next connected client. The logic of reading from each stream and writing it back is encapsulated in the function called handle underscore client. Each thread receives a closure that calls this function. This closure must be a move closure, since this must read a variable, stream, from the enclosing scope. In this function, we print the remote endpoint address and port, and then define a buffer to hold data temporarily. The read method in the stream returns the length of the data it's read. It can return zero in two cases, if it's reached the end of the stream, or if the given buffer was zero in length. We know for sure that the second case is not true. Thus, we break out of the loop, and the function, when the read method returns zero. In that case, we return an OK. We then write the same data back to the stream using the slice syntax. Note that we've used e print ln exclamation mark to output errors. This macro writes the given string to a standard error and has been stabilized recently. One might notice the apparent lack of error handling in reading from and writing to the stream, but that's not actually the case. We've used this operator to handle errors in these invocations. This operator unwraps the result to an OK if everything was fine, otherwise it does an early return of the error to the calling function. Also note that the question mark operator cannot be used in the main function currently since the main function does not return a result. So we save it. We exit from this file. Interacting with the server from the terminal is easy. When we run the server on a Linux machine and NC on another terminal, any text entered to NC should be echoed back. Note that as the client and server are running on the same node, we use 127.0.0.1 as the server address. When I run the test, it gives me test. Let's try it a few more times, and each time we get the same result. While using NC to interact with the server is fine, it's much more fun to write a client from scratch. In this video, we'll see what a simple TCP client might look like. Let's look at an example now. This client will read input from standard in as a string and send it over to the server. When it gets back a reply, it will print that in standard out. We first imported all required libraries. We then set up a connection to the server using TCP strem connect, which takes in the remote endpoint address as a string. In our example here, the client and server are running on the same physical host, so we use 127.0.0.1 as the server address. Like all TCP connections, the client needs to know the remote IP and port to connect. In case setting up the connection fails, we'll abort our program with an error message. We then start an infinite loop, in which we initialize an empty string to read user input locally and a vector of u8 to read responses from the server. Since a vector in Rust grows as necessary, we'll not need to manually chunk the data at each iteration. The read underscore line function reads a line from standard input and stores it in the variable called input. Then, it's written to the connection as a stream of bytes. At this point, if everything worked as expected, the server should have sent back a response. We'll read that using a buff reader that takes care of chunking the data internally. This also makes reading more efficient since there will not be more system calls than necessary. The readUntil method reads the data in our buffer, which grows as needed. 
Finally, we can print out the buffer as a string, which has been converted using the from underscore utf8 method. So we save this file. Running the client is easy. For that, we first need to run this code from the server side. Once this is done, we run this line of code for the client side. If I input test, we get test as result. This behaves exactly like NC.